Dear Lord, we're so thankful just for this time we spending and spend diving deeper into your word. We thank you for such an amazing weekend we had, Lord God. We know that it's just the start of what you're doing. And even as it was so just incredible and uh, just so many things transpired, Lord, we know that you have something greater in store for us as we uh, just keep going throughout this year, Lord God. We're thankful for this word you've given Allie. We pray that you just bless her, that you give her no fear in uh, delivering this word. That'll be on time, Lord God, that'll sink deep. And we'll be able to just soak it in and apply it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm kind of scared for this word only because most of my devos are are um, preaching, if you will. But this one's more of like a teaching. So the title of my devo is called Staying on the Wall. And I'm kind of really frustrated because I had literally almost everything done, but this morning I accidentally threw it away. So if this is bad, just please bear with me. But anyways, so I wanted to address some things um, before I start. Obviously, you guys know what authority is, like spiritual authority and um, basically you get spiritual authority by being in your seat place and without spending that time in your seat place, obviously you have no authority. You get authority by spending time with God. You don't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to get the authority of God. You know, that, that doesn't work. And so, um, that's why people say you can't write on the back of your parents' coattails. You can't write on the back of your, the preacher, you know, their, their coattails because you have to dig deep for yourself. And so obviously you can't, I'm, I can't be like, oh, Matt has authority. So I'll just take some of him because we all have different levels of authority, not like mine's lower than Matt's, but it's like his authority is different than mine. His authority over something is going to be different than mine. Anyways. Um, so I wanted to talk about the spirit of Korah today. Um, the spirit of religion and the spirit of Korah, they're two different things, but they are like twins. So obviously Tony Suarez did a wonderful job explaining and teaching the spirit of religion. And that kind of blew my mind, like how ridiculously close that is to a hyena. Like my mind was blown. Anyway, so um, I'm going to read something from the Bible, obviously. And so Numbers 16, one through four says, now Korah, the son of, uh, I don't know how to say that, the son of, I don't know. I have to say that the son of Levi with Dathan and Abraham, the sons of El Eliab. Hi guys, I should have looked at how to say this. And on the son of uh, something else, sons of Reuben, blah, 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 blah. Um, 250 leaders of congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. They gathered together against Moses and Aaron. So basically um, the city gathered against the leaders, Moses and Aaron, and said to them, you take too much upon yourselves for all the congregation is holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? So when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. So basically to summarize this, because I didn't really do a good job of reading it, but it basically this tribe or this city is coming against their leaders, mocking them and saying, you're not pure. Why are you leading? Like we are pure. We do a much better job leading. And so when Moses, the leader, he heard this, he immediately dropped to his face and started crying. You know, he, his reaction to this mocking was crying. And so I did some research on Cora because Cora was one of the main people who mocked. She, or he, it's a guy, actually. I thought it was a girl, but it's a guy. Um, he was leading that um, revolution. Is that what it's called? Like that stand up against the leaders, if you will. And so I did some research on Cora and Cora is the spirit that challenges authority. It challenges anyone put in leadership. It challenges the way people around them act. Try, he, it tries to put them into leadership. So the spirit of Cora is like, I would do so much better in that leadership role. Or you try to like, imagine yourself in that leadership role. So for example, if you 
desire to be on the worship team, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I would do so much better singing that solo than that girl, you know, some, something like a comparing aspect. And so Cora actually means make oneself bald. And isn't that so weird? It's like, it, that's Ali, why are you bringing it up? But in the Bible, which it means he brought shame upon his head. So the people were telling Moses and mocking him. And so they themselves already had the spirit of Korah. However, if you go on in the Bible, um, the story of Elisha, um, the teenagers or the young people, if you will, they were mocking him and um, saying, you have a bald head. And so they were claiming that Elijah himself had pride and had the spirit of Korah, but actually in reality, they did. And so by having that Sorry, my cat is being a lunatic. Anyways, by having that position, you are putting shame on your head, putting shame onto the father. Because ultimately, when you disrespect your leadership, you are disrespecting God because God has appointed those leaders for such a time as this. And so if you are saying, oh my gosh, I would do such so much better in that leadership role, you are saying, God, did you really pick them? Did you really pick them for a reason? So by second guessing God's handpicked one that he left the 99 for you are disrespecting not only your leadership but the father and so it goes on throughout the bible that you see the spirit of Korah come and i only have a few examples but the spirit of Korah comes literally out of nowhere and i'll get to that in a minute but so the mocking could stem from pride. It could also stem from jealousy. The thing is, the spirit of religion can also stem from pride and jealousy. Um, the spirit of religion is like, why does that girl jump like that? Why does she scream so loud? Do we really have to pray in tongues for that long? That's the spirit of religion. But the spirit of Cora would say, why does she get to pray on stage? Why can't I? So as you can see, they're not identical, but they are they go hand in hand because you could easily get the spirit of religion. Well, why is she praying like that? Well, she can pray like that. I can do that. Why can't you know? So we just have to be mindful. And that's why we have to stay on the wall. That's why we have to um, search our hearts daily and ask God to shine light on those areas because I'm going to ask you a few questions and not ref- you don't have to answer them, but I'm just going to ask you questions to really search your heart. And then lastly, I'm going to give you some examples. So an example is Cain, you know, um, Abel and Cain, that story, literally they got jealous. He got jealous of his brother. And so he killed his own brother because God favored his brother more. Instead of being happy for his brother, he was like, well, why did he get such a good blessing? Why didn't I get that? So right there, that's probably one of the first stories in the Bible that's showing Korah. The next um, story is Peter in the Bible. God literally warned Peter that he had three, he was going to deny him three times. And Peter was like, no, no, no. You know, like, I'm not going to do that, God. But just like that, just like a finger snap, he denied God three times. And that is what Korah can do to you. Korah can make you go along with the crowd. And so basically if someone, if I were to tell someone, oh my gosh, did you really hear the word pastor Kim preached? And if that person was like, yeah, it was so weird. You know, this just an example, but that along is passing on those thoughts of Korah. And so just like that, even if you didn't mean to agree with them, but you're already agreeing with them just like that, that's Korah. And so she try or he tries to creep in and and manipulate you because you don't even think obviously you're not thinking oh my gosh that word was so weird you know you're not thinking that you you probably thought it was good but see that manipulation that cora brings in that manipulation that cora brings in search and that is how some of the the offense happens at church that's why some people start leaving because they're like well how is that person getting paid and i'm not you know what i mean and so cora and religion, they both stem from offense. And that is probably why they are twins because they just try to creep in. And then there, you know, you're thinking thoughts like, oh my gosh, well, I could be an invade leader. I could probably set up the crew connects better than they could, you know, stuff like that. And I know it because I've dealt with it. I'm not being, I'm not being hypocritical because I know that it's real. And I know that I've dealt with it. So now I'm going to ask some rhetorical questions Actually, I got this Devo idea because Stacy, a lot of you know Stacy, she did an exaltation on this in our prayer 
meeting. And I was just so fascinated about the spirit of court because as you know, she asked these questions I'm about to ask you. And I was recognizing myself as dealing with some of those. And so I had to deal with it myself because obviously I'm not going to talk to you guys about it if I haven't dealt with it myself. So the first question, it's like, examine your position. Have you acquired or sought after leadership because you feel like you deserved it? Wow. Have you gone after leadership because you feel like you can influence our pastors or leaders? And then C, have you gone after leadership because you feel like you have earned it? That is really, let me read it again. Have you gone after leadership because you feel like you have earned it? A lot of times nowadays in society, I've talked about this multiple times, but our generation feels like we're so deserving. We feel like we should just get things handed to us when really half of you probably don't know what Pastor Paul and Kim and Pastor Jessica and David have gone through to get in that leadership role. They didn't just get it handed. They saw after it and had tears and sacrificed. And so you never really just earn earn leadership. You don't just earn it. Oh, I've read in my secret place for 365 days. I earn to be a leader. No, God has hand selected you. Okay. The next one is examine your view of others. A, do you value those around you? Do you criticize more than you compliment? Do you battle resentment with other people's accomplishment? This is being like, oh, she got a raise in her job. Why haven't I? Um, do you look for flaws in others so that you justify your own flaws and sin? So this is like, well, she liked that guy's picture on Instagram. I guess me liking it is fine too. Um, and then D, do you look for flaws in others so that you feel justified in your own flaws? Like I just said, and then are you suspicious of others motives? This one's hard one because you're like, what? I'm not suspicious of their motives. But then if you're like, well, They told me they didn't pray this week. So why are they leading prayer on the stage? Like that, that is being suspicious of others' motives. Okay, so then the last section is examine your view of of yourself. Do you find yourself fantasizing scenarios where you would be in charge of a situation ministry instead of someone else? Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you. This one is this one was probably the one that hit me the most because obviously most of us dream of being in leadership, dream of working in the kingdom, dream of just doing anything you can for God. But I had to stop because I was thinking, are my motives pure? Do I want to be in that position for a pure aspect, you know, um, others could be like, are you, is that cause you want to be entitled to a leadership role? Anyways, I'm going to stop or else I'm going to get myself in trouble. Okay. It says, do you look for flaws in others to make yourself more useful, talented, or spiritual? Do you try to sway other people over to your opinions about life church, even if it means discrediting your peers or leaders? So this one is actually, I've seen multiple times. Do you try to sway other people over to your opinions about life church, even if it means means discrediting your peers or leaders. Uh, I've seen people where they see preachers posts and they're like, that literally makes no sense. And they try to argue our leaders. And that's all I'm going to say. Do you hear your church family or pastors say something you have throughout the week? And instead of chalking it up as a confirmation, you have an, I already know it attitude. So this is basically saying pastor Kim's preaching or you know, preaching, praying, and she says something and you're like, oh, she's so slow. I already knew that on Monday. That's what that's meaning. And then lastly, do you feel like you have something better to say or pray than those who lead pre-service prayer or any part of the church service, small group, deeper classes, or teen meetings? So I just want to be open with you guys. And if you guys are thinking and you're like, wow, Ali, I really, if you ask that question, I feel like I have struggle with that. I just encourage you to really dig deep because like I said, without even knowing it, Cora can creep in. Um, he's manipulating, he's a jealous person and he's full of pride, full of entitlement. And so obviously you don't want to ignore that. You don't want to be like, Oh, it was just one thought. It's fine. No, because he creeps in and just like that, that's all your mind is filled with left and right. And you're thinking, because not only does it it might happen at school. It might happen at home and it might happen at church, mostly because the devil tries to steal, kill and destroy you. The devil literally hates you and he wants to break up all unity in the church. So it's mostly at church. But if you have thought about 
any of those and you're like, wow, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to speak out, but I just want you to deal with it later today or even after this Debo. And just, just like Moses, Moses, Moses didn't even know if God thought that Moses didn't even know if God really didn't think he was pure. He just, the thought of him being unpure, the thought of him having that bald head or whatever you want to call it terrified him. And that's exactly what we should do. If you, I mean, obviously don't cry yourself to sleep. Don't be terrified, but just go to God and just like Moses bow down before God and ask him to take away any unclean motives and any spirit of Korah, because Korah, like I have said multiple times, she creeps, he creeps in and he comes, he might come like a little, um, little mustard seed, and then he'll grow an inch his way. So with that being said, I'm going to pray out. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this Devo. I just thank you for speaking through me, Lord. I just pray that your people in this meeting have received it wholeheartedly, Lord. I just pray that they take it throughout their days and throughout their life, Lord. And I just pray that any spirit of core that may have tried to creep into their heart, Lord, I just pray that you, once they bow down before your name, I just pray that you erased it. And I pray that it never comes back. I pray that any spirit of Korah that has already assembled its way into the unity of our church is disbanded. I pray that it is, it is gone and it is gone, gone out through the door. And I pray that any spirit of religion even that is coming in and the thoughts, even the little thoughts that we've had, maybe we don't even know why we're thinking those. I just pray that you break those and you break those chains off of our minds. I pray that you give us a spirit of you, Lord. I just pray that you give us a spirit of purity, Lord. I just pray that you purify our hearts every day. And I just pray that you are cleansing our hearts, Lord. I just bless your people that have decided to join the diva, Lord. I just pray that any people who have joined later, or I just pray that people who are watching this on YouTube, Lord, I just pray that they purify their hearts and they just look at you and they look above righteousness in your name. I pray. Amen. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to stay tuned in for more, be sure to hit that notification bell. And also, follow us on Instagram, unshaken underscore vessels. That's all we have for today. Thank you.